How you doing out there, everybody? It's your boy, Dusty Cat, here on the fabulous West Coast, San Jose, California. Drink. Drink. Drink every time there's a bad horse pun. Bad, ho bad horse puns. That's time. a roll. That's a drink, yeah. Or I say James Justice, or I I'll get to another word, but we'll get some words every time we say them, or you'll have to drink. Apple juice, cider, whatever. It's going to be that kind of night. Because we're, it's a free-for-all. And all for free is mass hysteria. Because I just got off a plane about an hour ago. And we set everything up. And we're going to talk about what happened at Everfree Northwest. And have some great fun times. This, to my right, is Kerdewin. Who is going to sit in for our fabulous screwball. Because Screwies just dropped into Vancouver. And I think he's almost home. Almost. And coming in, pinch hitting from left field. Far left field. Yes. Far left field. So this is the character win. He's the the man behind the scenes who makes everything happen. I'm much better behind the camera than in front of the camera. You yes. Now you know why. We, we agreed to that much, yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, how are you doing out there in TV land? Um, just got back from, of course, Evergreen Northwest. Wonderful, wonderful show this year. Um, we did wonderful, huge charity auction. Um... Another quilt went up and out uh, for big bucks. Everything there was great. We had John Delancey. We had Nicole Oliver. We had Tabitha St. Germain. We had Bonnie, the actual creator. Bonnie Burchelli, yes. Bon Bonnie. Zachary. Zachary? Zachary. What? what? Why did you say that? Why did I say Bonnie Burchelli? I don't, I don't know. know. That's an actress. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Yes, Bonnie well, Zachary. She's a Bonnie Bonnie Gloss. She's a Bonnie Gloss. Yeah. So Bonnie was there, so I got to say hi to the person who helped all of this happen, and that was awesome. Um, Lee Tolkar was there. I haven't seen Lee for a couple of years, so Lee was there having a great time. Um, Ingrid Nilsson was there with Brett. Tying people in knots. Tying people in knots. I, I had a wonderful yoga session with her on, mm. on Friday morning, and the room was full of people doing yoga at a Brody convention. Yeah. You're doing what, P90 is it? Or? No, I'm doing uh, DDP yoga. DDP yoga. DDP yeah. yoga, which is good stuff. So um, It's like yoga, but macho. Macho yoga. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and saw Mike Check, my buddy Mike Check, saw Pony Toast, saw all these guys out there, saw the guys from Bronyville. Tons and tons of stuff that we did. But really, I have no guest other than us and talking no. about no, this, that, and the other thing. We got a bunch and of guests. We got a bunch of guests. They're yeah, like, right these there, guys right those here. Those guys. Yeah, they're famous. Yeah. Yep. All the guys in the chat, all of you in the chat out there are tonight's guests. So we're going to let Charity roll over for a week. So we're going to do an abbreviated show tonight. And then we're going to go full show next week when Screwball's back. We're going to give away the giveaway stuff that should have gone tonight. Um, and then again, right after that, the week after that, we're going to have Lee Tokar on the show. Right after episode 100. And Lee is always a blast. Great friend of the show. and uh, He doesn't turn it off. He, he no. is a walking, talking tune. Yep, he's a walking, talking tune. And, and we'll have lots to talk about because not only um, I know for a fact that he's going to be huge, huge in Japan, but he's going to be huge in episode 100. But he is restarting Fan Built, and that should be up mm. and live by the time he comes on the show. Relaunching. Um, relaunching. Again. But anyway, we talked about a lot of that while we were there, um, and that was some awesome stuff. Um, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to go, seeing as I just got off the plane, how about boy, we... Boy, are his arms tired. Boy, are my arms tired. Um, let's see what's inside Dusty's bag. You guys want to see what's inside Dusty's bag? Because I haven't even unpacked it yet. The horror. The horror. Dusty's derpy bag. What's in the bag? Let's see. Let's take a look. What's in the bag? Hmm. Let's see. Something to clean my glasses with. Okay. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Sunglasses. There we go. And something to wipe and something, something to, to wipe with. Something to wipe with. A brand new rechargeable battery box that Buttons gave me. Thank you, Buttons, because I forgot my battery, my phone charger, like a doofus. So I got that. Oh, I've got this power brick that actually belongs to Bajati, which I need to mail back to him because I forgot to give it to him. Sorry, Bajats. I'll mail this back. No back. phone for you. No phone for you. Yes, thank you. You're so nice to. Basically, let me have that. Some business cards in that one. What's in this pocket over here? <gasps> Secret shipping cards. Look at that. This is the Ponyville University update. And let's see. The special cards. An entire swarm of breezies. Special cards. Oh, this is the fun one. This was the this was the card set that was specific to Everfree 
this year. Fanfic author Discord. Oh boy. Oh so kawaii. Look at that. That look is at a that. concept that bears thinking. Here. Look at that. It's so kawaii. Oh yeah. And of course, fa- look at that. That is cutesy. Love it. And then fashion icon Steven Magnet. Oh, it's so amazing. So amazing. Look at that. Focus, 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 focus. focus. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, okay. And then object of adoration, which would be what would the object of adoration be? Um, M. A. Larson's uh, let's say a stubble mustache. No. <laughs> yes, Twyla Kane. Twyla Kane, the object of adoration card. These are kind of cool. And then, of course, all the some of these other sets. Um, <clears throat> God, I got all, all the different three card sets that they had. Oh, Fufflepuff card now. Fufflepuff Hazard card. Look oh, at that. excellent. Okay, then. <clears throat> yep. So cute. Special rule. What is the rule? Tell me. Mine. The... Special. You may swap Pufflefluff with any pony card shipped with Chrysalis. <laughs> it's not that she was jealous. Not at all. It's just that she loved Chrissy so very much. <laughs> Says right there. Nice. I can't wait to get those cards into our game. All right, what else is in here? Uh, ooh, I got this new book called My Little Brony, which was sent to me for a review by the publisher. So this isn't actually available yet, and I read it on the way up and the way back, and we'll be doing a book review on that uh, next show. So it's okay, a guys, read quick, read quick, screen capture, screen, screen capture, capture, screen capture. Yep, done. There you go. Yeah, but this is a new book that's come out by K.M. Hayes. Um, it's put out by Skyhorse Publishing. Yes, Skyhorse Publishing is an actual company in New York. And uh, we'll do a review on this. It's a tw- age is 12 plus, but it's p- pretty much 12 to 18. Um, pretty good. And uh, I'll give a full report next show. Dusty the Reviewer. Dusty the Reviewer. Uh, what else is in here? Ooh, I stopped. Of course, we were in Seattle, right? So you go to the airport and, and Sub Pop Records is out of Seattle, and they're like an independent record company, or they were an independent record publisher way back in the day. They, they were the ones that broke Nirvana and Soundgarden and a lot of those bands from Seattle. So I stopped in there, and they had the new Sonic Highways DVD set that I've been looking for pretty cheap, so I picked that up. That was cool. So, got that. Uh, what else in here? Stuff, stuff, stuff. That's junk, that's junk, that's junk, that's junk. Uh, let's see. Posters. Got posters. Oh, here's... Let's go inside here where all the, the flat stuff is. So all of this stuff here. Loot. Ah, loot. Flying loot. loot. Flying. Mm. It's all going away. And, of course, I got from Screw Loose, I got some stickers. Of course, the New Lunar Republic. And for, all you, I say for all you rebels. I'm a rebel. I'm a rebel. And, of course, the Wonder Bolts, which the Wonder Bolts logo. And if anybody doesn't know, that's actually my art. I did that and gave it to him. So all the patches and all that stuff, that's mine. I've been a Wonder Bolt for a long time. So, put this down. And we got Pixel Prism. Drawing up Dusty as a 1970s game show host. That was fun. Yeah, his taste in jackets is just about like just that. Just about too. like that, too. <clears throat> that Richard Dawson look. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you don't know who Richard Dawson is, yeah, get yeah. his taste. And really cool program guide. Look at this thing. Nice. Look at the colors in that sucker. Yeah, they they go they go full full production full values on there. this. Yeah. Mm. Cider. 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 Mm, special uh, inserts. Luna. Luna sticker. And yeah. Luna stick. Bolt. Drawing. Yay! Dash. And another pixel prism as overhaul as Commander Easy Glider. These are her five buck cookies. They for five bucks, that's a bargain, let me tell you. Yep. And, of course, I got... The only one I really needed was Kelly Sheridan, so I got Kelly Sheridan's autograph right there on the new Pixel Kitties art. Had to get it. Pixel Kitties. Autograph artist to the stars. Yes. And I got the new, the latest custom cover from Leak Fish. Leak Fish actually got on the IDD co- IDW cover of the comic. And a fan, uh, friend brought me the Fan Expo cover with Nightmare Moon. Which was up uh, number one, right there. And Kelly had one of these put in her bag, so she didn't want it, so she signed it. So we'll give that away on, on a future show. 
Got another patch from Screw Loose. What I need for another project. I'm not telling you about. Ha 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 ha. Uh, another sticker from Leak. Leakfish sticker. Uh, ooh, this is kind of cool. Now this this was given to me by a Mega Animation fan, and I was walking through the lobby, right? And all of a sudden, I see this guy who's drawing this here, and I come up, I tap him on the shoulder, it's like, "Hey, that looks like me," and it was me. <laughs> so he he drew this during the con, went and had it printed, and then gave it to me. So that was kind of cool. That was kind of neat. So that's that's what's in Dusty's bag Chirilli, of stuff. What's in here? Oh, Alicorn Princess Blast. Alicorn Princess Blast, which is the the fly and shoot princess game that's been in development for a couple of years. They had it actually in a, a stand-up <clears throat> arcade box this year, but they did some. Wow, was it difficult? It's like it shot at you from fifteen different ways, and you had one one freaking uh, shield and only went forward. You couldn't win this thing. It was too tough. They're going to go back and... Nah, it's not too tough. Gonna... You're just too old. Yeah, I am too old. Okay. My, my... As long as we got that clear. My hands don't go that fast anymore. And I'm okay. older than him. What's up? What else is in here? Uh, let's see. Oh, my shit fit folder cards. I gave away a whole bunch of those, but I still have some for, for future generations. Trust me. And all the posters. Posters, posters, posters. Ah, uh, this one's actually yours. I got this for you. Uh-oh. Yeah. There we go. Yep. Yep. That's the one. And I got this one given to me, which is a, 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 a beautiful human Spitfire. Look at that. That's awesome. Nature been kind to her. Nature been kind to her. Now this, this was, I hadn't seen this before. And this was the, the new poster put out by family. And that's, that is, I think, a clue to the entire season. Look at that. So it's all the girls around the map. And Pinky is winking at you. Yeah, she is so aware she, of the she fourth is wall this season. So aware of the fourth wall, and she's saying there's something in this map that's going you're, that's coming in season five. We are not telling you yet. Yeah, what, so. what what's the count now for fourth wall breaks oh, on I'm, I, say in season five? Is it, is it three I think yet? No, I think it's beyond that. What are the majors? You know, they're shaking the camera. Yep, shaking the camera. You know, like, uh, like, but it does. Yep, uh -huh. absolutely. So I think she's broken it about fifty times. What right. do you guys think? But well, she's fully aware. She, yes, she fully knows aware. Watching. And I got this cute little button from Casey Robin. Casey Robin is uh, her and her grandma play uh, Applejack and Granny Smith um, at these conventions. Last time we saw them was Equestria LA. Um, Casey got a job at Disney and got really busy, and it's then she's finally shown focus up. Focus test. Focus test. And it's a little. Oh, there you go. Check that out. Wow, we didn't know the camera could do that. Yeah, it's like a lapel pin. Those are cool. And that's hand-painted. So she gave that to me. There's your, there's your scale with yep. it, against the fingertip there. Yeah. And, of course, a new patch for my derpy shirt. Ponyville Express. Man, I got a pile of stuff here. And, of course, everybody knows that I live compossible a lot. Was there for to see Discord. And she gave me this cool shirt of her getting taken out by Discord. That was kind of cool. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. That neat. Whee! And I had to pick up... Of course, I was down two Pezzes. I had Rainbow Dash, but I got yeah. these from Purple Tinker. Yeah. So she had she had them in her store, so I got those. It's all about the Pez. All about the Pez. And really cool, uh, Brony Mom Tees. Uh, greeting apparel for the Brony community and their families by Lisa Phillips. Um, so basically, Lisa is a Brony's mom, and she went to this convent, all these conventions, and said, "There's nothing for us. There's nothing for the families." So she's making, I I love my Brony or Brony dad, Brony mom T-shirts. Um, so they gave me one for my twin, my little brother. Um, pop that open. Twenty percent cooler, bro. I'm gonna send that to my little brother, and uh, they gave that to me. That's uh, it's really cool. It's a really good shirt, too. 100% uh, cotton. Good shirts. Good quality. Good colors. So check out uh, Brony Mom Tees. And that would be at Brony, Brony Mom Tees, T E E S, dot com. If you want to buy. Not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to buy some of these for your parents or your brothers or sisters, because it's really cool stuff. So that is the pile. Oh, oh and uh, my buddy Mike Check uh, from Cantalot Radio. 
who has a, a uh, who's another wrestling fan, right? Like I am, and he's seen my Randy Macho Man Savage Macho Cat costume. He said, "You're missing something, Dusty, and I made you something for your birthday, Ooh, and I'm gonna yeah. gi- I'm gonna give it to you at at the convention." So he gave me these. What do you think? Cool, huh? I kind of like them. I think it sets off the costume. Now you know why you have drinking games. Anesthetic. Anesthetic. Yeah. But these are cool. That's actually, they're really nice glasses. So, thank you, Mike. These are cool. The, uh, and that's sort of my swag. The swag I brought back. Mm. And, of course, uh, my, my, my shirt up here that I wore at the con, which is basically everybody wanted to rip it off my body. My, my good friend Lisa made that for me from that fabric that's been going around. And we got some more fabric, so we're going to make some more shirts. Oh, that's kind of cool, but uh, that's sort of sort of happened that we were uh, was going on here. I've got yeah, some. Yeah, we heard there was a convention up there. There was a convention up there. So yeah, again, everybody was there. Uh, Delancey, <clears throat> it was really cool, right? Friday, no, Saturday night. Um, John Delancey just comes to the hotel bar and just sits down with his agent and uh, Mark Carrion, who was uh, the the vice chair. And I hadn't seen John in a while. Right, so mm-hmm. I love sit down there, and I thought I would go over and, and give him a hello, which I did, and I, I spent about five minutes just hi, how you doing, John? Haven't seen in a while. You know, how's the movie? How's your how's your boat trip? Right, because he went off. Ooh, bad question. Oh, bad question. Yeah, I guess his boat had problems, but uh, I was like, okay, I just took some of your time. I'll catch you later. Said, no, 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 stay. Really? Yeah, stay, stay. So we talked for half an hour, whatever, while they were getting ready to go to dinner. And we had a drink. And then Lee Tokar comes over. <laughs> and I hadn't seen Lee in, in Stupid Forever. So, yeah. I mean, me and Lee started having a drinking contest. Like, he and Lee used to have a drinking contest. Like, oh, have another one. Oh, let's have some dinner. Mm. But Lee is cool. Lee is back. He's going to be awesome. Uh, let's see what else happened. Um, charity auction. Charity auction was awesome. Always a big thing. Always a big thing. I got a picture for that. Let me uh, find it for you. Uh, charity auction. I do have a bunch of pictures, so we're going to run through some pictures now. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, there it is. Yes, yes, yes. Let's see how fast you can do this. Let's see how fast I can do it. Hit the timer, hit the timer. Bing! Hey, you're not showing it. What? Okay, I screwed that up. Come on, Dusty. You're supposed to know this. We want a good pro. Yeah. Yes, I know. Go. Where is it? Where did it go? You've been doing this long enough. You should know how to do it. That one. Thank you. Show it. There, there we you go. go. Hey, it just got a whole lot prettier. It's got a whole lot pretty in here. There, yeah, you there you go. So this is the beginning of the auction, and they were a little behind on um, getting things set up. So I asked John if he would come up for a few minutes and sign some of the stuff that was there. This is a beautiful Discord. Uh, paper craft. So we had pulled it out, had him sign that, and sign a couple of things. And uh, I told a story about Lost Pegasus Unicon, but shall not be named, when I first met him. And uh, he was very, very gracious. And then went to his autograph signing. And we did. We just went on and on. It was great, wonderful. We broke twenty five thousand dollars on the live auction. Yeah. And then the 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 silent auction put us over twenty seven. So really cool. The the quilt went for seven thousand dollars yep so that really good number for that quilt um a silver huge slinger amount of work goes in huge though. amount of work goes in those things wow and of course the uh the silver slinger piece of the two sisters crying that went for twenty five hundred dollars and loved it loved it loved it I, I got to hold that thing for just that long it was like uh, i want you but i can't have you yes wonderful wonderful people up there twenty seven thousand dollars for seattle children's hospital good stuff um, let's see, what other pictures have I got in here? Uh, do, 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 do. Properties, add in. Which one have I? Oh, yeah, I, I met uh, the great and powerful Trixie. Uh, donk. This, this girl did a very wonderful Trixie. Uh, full costume. Plus, she had this little magic ball, and she met me thir- uh, Thursday. And was basically just... I guess she's a huge fan of mine because she was. We, I was talking with uh, Garnica and, and some other people, and she just like come up to me and 
took pictures and all that kind of stuff, and it was kind of funny. But uh, saw her all weekend. Mm. Uh, it was great. Had some Denny's lunch with her. Uh, wonderful, wonderful girl, uh, and very in character. When she did Trixie, she mm. was like very, very in character, and uh, did a very good job of it. Yeah, there's some there are some just amazing cosplayers out there. I don't yeah. know how many of you were at uh, BabsCon. <clears throat> but uh, I say, but we had uh, so we had a uh, sunset shimmer. Uh, oh my God, she sold it. Yes, she looked and acted and spoke it and just had the attitude of the character. The character started from within, and yeah. uh, just just really sold it. Speaking of cosplayers, <clears throat> this shining armor princess cadence was over the top. Oh my God, there. Staring at Dusty's. Look at this thing. Oh, yeah, there you go. The yeah, yeah. Look at that thing. It's got a light-up heart on it, and it's got a light-up hammer on it, and all of this stuff. And they took second. Second. How does that happen? They took second. because. Do you, do you have a picture of how, how I that I don't. I don't, because I was in the contest. Got but it. The one that beat them was Pinkie Pie as Sailor Pinkie Pie from Sailor Moon, and a changeling you know, tuxedo mask, which were gorgeous. Gorgeous, and I think the the judges just loved the dichotomy of of the two properties mixing. Yeah. And this girl, this girl won last year, so I think they went with the new one right. because it was. I'm sure there'll be pictures of it out there on the net, but really, really well done. Um, but these two just set it off. These, yeah. this, this was the kind of quality stuff that was out there at Everfree Northwest. Yeah, there's a, a real quick question here from Soggy Milk it says for the uh, silent auction. Uh, did my pastel picture of Discord go all the way through? Um, yeah, everything everything that was in the auction sold. Excellent. Everything. Excellent. There was nothing held back. Outstanding. Yep. So uh, everything, everything, everything. Uh, let's see. We had we had a lot of fun. Uh, let's see if I can get a new picture up there for you. Um, me and Screwball were just like messing around. Uh, there was a gentleman there who had a plastic printer, and he was printing uh, giant. Twilight Kane heads. Um, let's see, where's that? There it is. Okay. Uh, it's seen. Let's see that. Eh, we set up this little thing where <laughs> Screwball's gonna beat me with a cane. Um, <laughs> always a good thing. Always a good thing. But the, these, the heads he's making on these things are that big. They're huge. And he not only made Twilight, but he made Rainbow Dash with the smirk, right? And I gotta have that. So he had these. Mm ones he put on sticks that were already spray painted gold but they really needed some work and I went well, why can't you can you print me a new one he said oh yeah I'll print you a new one so I'm going to order that and I'm going to make my own rainbow dash cane pimp cane maybe I'll make a pimp cane you should yeah it's going to be about that big huge really cool I'll paint it up real nice yeah maybe do some uh, lost cast waxing I was thinking about yeah, it that'd, that'd be cool the lost wax casting last, lost wax casting yeah. yes yeah. Yes. Lost, lost cast waxing could hurt yes there'd be a <laughs> yeah just a little yeah That'd be cool. Yeah. So, uh, so start to get a few questions in. Uh, uh, give me a question. I'm going to give you a question here. AC Race Best. Hey. Hey. Hey, guys. Miss you all at Everfree Northwest this year. Was yes. wondering how this year compared to previous years up in Seattle. Besides uh, what you've already been over, uh, what stuck out this year? Well, I didn't go, so you have to ask yes. him. Yes. <clears throat> so what stuck out this year was Slider. numbers. Lots of them. So what they had done is they wanted more... Uh, vendors. So they moved vendors from down in the hotel up into the convention center. So that big area where we, we ate cereal and watched little movies last year, that was dealer's room. So all the dealers were in there. And the ones the rooms that were down in the hotel were actually turned into panel rooms. Um, the only bad thing about it was they put autographs right next door. So when they've lined up for autographs and dealer's room, it all got jumbled up. And especially because John Delancey was there, there were such long lines that nobody knew what line to get in because you had sponsors and you had ADA and you had, you know, the regular line. All the lines got, it was line con right there in the building. And that same building had main hall. So it was nuts. So hopefully they change that for next year um, and get autographs back into the hotel. Um, that was the only thing I saw that uh, really stuck out as on the bad side. Now, what really stuck out on the good side mm -hmm. was more people. Lots more. 
So it's completely overrunning yeah. the facilities. It's great. Yeah, yeah, we overrun the facility, I think, because there was a lot of people. Um, the concerts were decently attended. Um, Denotive came out from uh, Minnesota and rocked the place. Um, Tarby tore the place down. Um, I watched Silva Hound get everybody bouncing. Um, from what I hear, everything was really good on the music side. And the stage, oh my goodness, the stage was huge. The place they had autographs last year, which was behind the stage, they, that's, they blew that out, moved the stage back, put more seats in there, and when John Delancey was on stage doing his thing, they filled the room. Yeah. Filled the room. And the lighting, the light, just the lighting was ungodly. Ungodly. It was huge. I think I've got a picture of Tarby playing. So let me, uh, let me see if I can pull at it real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Where's the Tarby shot? Yeah. Yeah, there's a comment about, let's say, from uh, Marby. Um, he said that the autograph lines are getting, you know, unmanageably long. Yeah, well, where they had it was yeah. unmanageable. <clears throat> they could have managed it if it was in a different spot. Right. Yeah, which uh, brings, it brings up a uh, question from Trish. Trish is here just giving a shout. Uh, says she lives vicariously through everyone on Twitter. How was the space? Um, again, because everybody was complaining about about crowding. Well, we sort of already answered that. Yeah. More people into a, into the same space means you know you'd better like you be, your you better like better. your neighbor. But we're brownies, so we we all. Yep. So, that's the lights. I was standing <clears throat> five feet away from the the stage. That's Tarb there on the left, and look at all those lights plus the smoke, and it ringed all the way around. And the speakers were huge. They, they were rocking that joint. And Tarby put in a great show. A great show. So if you didn't watch it on the live stream, hopefully you put it up on YouTube. Because he did a really great job. So uh, that, I think, is what stuck out to me. Other than, like, the restaurant being overpriced again. But, you know, oh, the hotel restaurant. So um, let's see what else. Uh... Yeah, it, it, it was a beautiful weekend. It was 70s, 80s. It didn't rain until this morning when we left. So it was a, a beautiful, gorgeous weekend. Um, lots of people, lots of old friends. Got to spend time with Lee Tokar and some other people I hadn't seen in a very long time. Got to meet Kelly Sheridan for the mm -hmm. first time. She was very excited to see me in Screwball. Um, so everything really was a lot of fun. Um, not really that many things I could tell that went wrong. You know, I'm sure there are things are because there always are. I'm, I'm sure Bajati and, and Markarian and some of those guys will tell us about it or not tell us about it. It's our business. But uh, I, I had a wonderful time. Wonderful time. Um, and again, I was full full range VIP. So I, I got in and helped in a lot of places where they needed me. Um, uh, and everything just went stellar. It was great. Right. Loved it. All right, I'm going to drop a couple more questions here. Then I'm going to reload my IRC client because it's acting up for me. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, so, uh, Marby Z uh, asks, uh, you know, have either of us played a Splatoon game for Wii U? Uh, I don't think... We don't I, even have Wii U. Yeah. Uh, so, do you think the, I think the Smooge could beat the Inklings in a Turf War? I don't, I don't even know what an Inkling is. I don't have an, an Inkling. An Inkling is part of the Splatoon game. Okay. And I have not seen it. I don't play Wii U, so I don't know. All right, I'll be right back into the chat, folks. It's it's acting up for me. So yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out the picture of me and Ingrid from Thursday when she said, "Come down to the pool." Okay, so <laughs> I go down there, and it is it is frighteningly hot, and the sun's coming down, and we sit there, and I talk to Brett and her about stuff hadn't seen either of them in a while brett was like all all about it and we're sitting there having cider and i'm thinking wow it's getting really hot but i wasn't thinking about it because i haven't been in the sun for very long i'm wearing my shorts i get back to my hotel later and i'm barbecued from the knees down ow, <laughs> ow. yay firefox ow don't do that um yeah but there's ingrid uh thursday before the show even starts uh so that was fun uh, getting down there to spend some time with them at the pool. Uh, we actually went back to their hotel and partied on Saturday night um, a little bit. And uh, that was kind of cool. Uh, let's see what else is going on in here. Uh, another, another picture. Are you guys having fun living vicariously through me? Because this is... Oh, we found... Uh, me and Marjan found this 
uh, wonderful piece for Sibs, which I hope he's given to her now. If not, and she's watching this, and I've spoiled it. Um, wow, these pictures are big. Yeah. That's, yeah, we have to... I have to <clears throat> fix... I have to show you how to, how to yeah. bulk uh, yeah. shrink those. Bulk shrink them. Uh, yeah, so somebody made this really cool little wildfire. And we, we showed that to Sibsy, and she squeed, so Marjan picked it up for her, and I'm sure he's giving it to her right about now, because they're in Vancouver, just got there. So, uh, and she had two of those things. They were really, really cool. Um, a uh, girl was making these really right. small, little, tiny uh, Nightmare Moons and Big mm -hmm. Macs, and they were only like 15 bucks. They were really, really cool, but they were about, you know, that size. Um, really done really well. Um, let's see what else. Donk. Okay. While you're doing that, yeah. uh, <clears throat> say, um, Bobby Joe Dudley says, Bobby know, Joe. Bobby Joe. Bobby Joe says, What are the weirdest cosplays y'all saw at Everfree Northwest? Oh, weird, huh? Um, think about it for a second. Um, I saw Female Hipster Discord. Oh, God. Yes, that's what I saw. Um, let's see, what else was in there? Um, I saw. Future Twilight with Future Pinkie Pie. Um, I saw... I saw a great and the powerful Trixie mm. who tried to do magic in the that, with the magic rings. Right. And it just failed and failed and failed. And then he pulled out a copy of Prince's guitar and he had a, a speaker <laughs> behind underneath the cult cloak and he, he just played lead guitar. Nice. And yeah, so he, he won his... Uh, his thing. And uh, here's a beautiful Equestria plush. Everyone knows Equestria plush. They, put, they brought out their Mod Pie. And this is like, this thing was absolutely gorgeous. So we got Ingrid back there to sign it after I took this picture. But wow, look at that thing. That gorgeous. is gorgeously nice. Yeah. yeah. I got a couple more questions for you. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's start with uh, Pink Pearl Apple. Hi, P. Yeah. It uh, says, uh, Dusty, only able to watch the tail end of the auction. Was it fun? Of course it's fun. Yes. yes. Um, do you know if any of the panels are going to be, or anything else like that's going to be uh, out on YouTube? Do they record them, and are they going to? Um, I up? I don't know. I know that they they did them live, and if they didn't record them while they were doing them live, that would be stupid. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, realm of that would be stupid if they didn't, I would think that they recorded them and that they will be coming out and ferreted it out like it normally does when somebody gets one edited, it'll hit the net. So hopefully that'll happen. I could ask Bjots um, Bjote. Um, if that's going to happen, and have an answer for you next show. How's that? Outstanding. And uh, Flair Cobra has one of the most important questions I have ever seen ever. anywhere. Ever. Do you think there is anything that Larson won't sign? No. 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 Yeah, I, we, saw him, I saw him sign a cheesecake. Sign a cheesecake. He signed the back, uh, signed the back of uh, Margin the Lion's head. head. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. Yep. I, am, I don't think there's anything that man won't sign at all. Yeah, you know, so he he, know, he knows how it works. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, and Marby wants to know what are we doing to survive this rather inconvenient two week break from MLP? You're looking at it. We go to a convention yeah. and we tell you all about it, and then we speculate on what's going to happen because all of the teasers fall, and you're going, ooh, what's going on with the teasers? Oh and, my God, those teasers! Yes, the teasers. Yeah, I drive 160 through school zones, uh, so that that keeps me entertained. Yep. Yeah, you know, keeps yep. local police entertained mm -hmm. too. <laughs> and I, I'll show you a really quick picture of me and Screwball in our cosplays that we did on Friday, and that's me again as Commander Easy Glider with the polo on, so I'm off duty, and of course, Good King Sombra, Screwball. Yeah, of course. Yes. Oh, I'm telling you, that boy's got a thing for... for that boy's got a thing for oh, my, mm -hmm. That boy ain't right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, let's see what else we got here. Um, have we seen the new Lullaby for a Princess animation yet? I have. I, I, have, I, I have not, so yeah. lay it on me. I'm not... Okay. Two and a half years of hand-drawn animation. Just absolutely gorgeous. Well done, good movement, in their style. It's not, like nothing we've seen before. So they didn't copy anybody, they didn't copy the show. It was all hand done and hand drawn. And just gorgeously done. And on top of that, Ponyphonic went back and he 
remixed and remastered the song. So it's better than it was. And all together, it's like yeah. really well done. Really well done. And yeah. I, I saw it at the con on little laptops. So I cannot wait until we can put it on that TV with that stereo system and watch it as soon as we're done here. That doesn't mean we're going early, but as soon as we're done here, <laughs> we'll throw we'll, you all out. We'll throw we, you all out, and we'll, yeah. we're going to watch some video. Yeah, that but, say, uh, say that whole yeah. you know, both the earlier animation and uh, say this one. It's it's a labor of love. You can, Absolutely, you can, you can always tell. You yep. can always it always shines through. Yeah, two and a half years of work, drawing every day, <clears throat> three point by. In fact, they did a how it was made, and they were drawing 0.5 seconds of animation a day. 0.5 seconds. You know how long that song is? It's point draw 0.5 seconds of animation a day. That's crazy. All right. It's crazy. Yeah, and so, uh, as Marby also wants to know, as I'm speaking of more fan-made material, uh -huh. have we, either of us been reading Horse Wife comics? I haven't. I've heard Horse Wife is pretty hilarious, so I need to pick that up and take a look at it. But I haven't had the chance to yet. I, it's relatively new. It's another one of those Tumblr blog things, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so I need to pick that up. Yeah. So uh, actually, if you could, uh, you know, say send a link to the chat so that uh, everybody else can see it too. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. Oh. Link to the chat. Link to the chat. Let's see what else have I got going on here. Oop, no shush. Um. So, guys, friendship. I'm gonna give you that word, friendship, right now. I'm gonna show you a picture that I twittered out. That I, oh, I'm going to need anesthetic. I you're think. probably you probably are. So, good friend. I don't know if anybody saw the uh, opening and closing ceremonies. Yeah, right click. Uh, uh, what? Let's see size. Uh, fit the screen. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. He's still teaching me. Yes. So, good friend of mine. Basically, was playing Malady in that. Of course, that was a guy. Doesn't matter to me what they do, but. Did a very good job acting in the skits. And we're partying Sunday night um, in Soren's room. Soren's the, the kid with the big flag that hangs out at the conventions. And Blue comes in with Sax Brony and him and dis despondent. Dis dis Blue comes in, throws this bag full of you know, fingernail polish and says, This girl needs... Needs her fingers painted because just had a, something bad happen. I said, I'm up. Give it to me. And I start taking out Splat. taking out colors and all kinds of stuff. And I was like, sit down here, honey. Not a problem. And I break out into, you know, nail technician. And I'm, I do the nails up and it's like, get it all. And they're just drinking, thinking about nothing. I'm doing on the nails. And I get them all dry. And it's like, what else is in here? Ooh, sparklies. It's like clear sparklies in there and the whole kind of stuff. And by the time we were done... Smile on his face, everything, mm. and that's friendship, right there. I do that for my woman. Why can't I do that for my friend? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And and just was absolutely happy the rest of the night. And it has nothing to do with my masculinity that I can't actually paint another man's fingernails. Yeah, you'll just use like, you know, uh, engine paint, engine paint, oil, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but <clears throat> but yeah. And you wouldn't believe the amount of colors they had. I was like, two handfuls of colors. But it's like, I'm going, oh, this is fun. Because I used to paint stuff, and I paint my, my girlfriend's toenails, so why, why not? All righty, all righty. Yeah. Give us your questions. Give us your questions. We will answer them. We will give you answers that you had not imagined. Possible. Yes. Yeah. Good. Another great cosplay. Show us more. I will. There we go. I'm learning. He can be taught. Yes. Sheriff Silverstar. Sheriff Silverstar. And Commander Easy Ladder. Right there. Mmm, I love that mustache. Absolutely. We see him. We see each other every convention. And uh, he did a really good Silverstar. Sweet, yeah. Yep. Got to remember that old uh, show. Is it Silver Star or 3030? Yeah, 3030. Yeah. yeah. Brave Star. Brave Star. Brave Star. Brave Star. Brave Star. Yeah, with 3030. It was, uh, it was, uh, unfortunately, it was done by Filmation, which yeah. means wasn't, the animation wasn't great. But it was the uh, same you're looking for more horse stuff, you got this this you know horse cyborg guy. Yep. And, with a big gun. Yeah. Gun. Yeah, he would cyborg between being a real horse that Captain or, or Silver, uh, Sheriff Silverstar would actually ride. 
but he could actually get up on two legs and be a robot horse thing for shoot with a gun and transformer all this. Transform. In the sky. it was about the same era as he-man so it had the same animation style yeah that's uh, that's that was horrible yeah filmation filmation was horrible the kiss of doom uh so waveform wants to know how wave what is the best meal you had at the, at the convention oh. there's, there's some good restaurants by there there is but i didn't have a good meal i didn't you know what the best meal i had was sushi Sunday after the show, because Blue and the rest of the uh, the troop that did the uh, skits said, Dusty, let's go to AFK. And AFK is, a, is a, a bar up there, which is a geek bar. They have, they're supposed to have, they have uh, you can sit down, eat your dinner, play Cards Against Humanity. They have all the games there that you can borrow. They have video games you can borrow. And you can sit there and eat dinner and play games, right? And they had, and the first one was near Everett. And then they put another one which was close to the convention center. And so we're all going to go there. So 20 people show up. So they can't accommodate us. Couldn't figure out what to do. So, oh, let's go do this. Oh, let's go do that. No, let's just go have some sushi. So we go to this place that's kind of a sushi boat place. Is it up and over that ridge that basically has a cliff on the other side? No. Yeah, okay. No, I don't. But basically we go to this place and it's like they put it on a conveyor belt. And it come along and you grab it and you eat it. Conveyor belt style, mm. and it's not. It's like okay, conveyor belt sushi, fine, whatever. I just ate enough of it, and that and that was the best, the best meal I had because we ate at Denny's because oh, Screwball said we weren't going to eat at Denny's, and we did. Um, and then I had Seven yeah. Eleven, which is up the hill, right across the street. What and, are you doing eating at Seven Eleven at a convention, son? Hey, quarter pound hot dogs. Okay, buck ninety nine. Come oh, on, there you go. There you go. Yeah, it might, it might even have the meat. Might even. But yeah. Mini burgers. So yeah, we uh we had that and uh, and Denny's and no, I did go down to the barbecue place. Oh, you did down the street. And that was my Thursday dinner because I love that place. Awesome, awesome barbecue. And uh, they had a new cider, yeah. uh, can of cider that uh, that had just come out from Seattle. Smith something. Smith something. Yeah, I think I might even have a picture of it. Wasn't as good as the cider from last year. No, it wasn't. Cider. Cider. Uh. What else we got in here? Da, 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 da. Questions. We need your questions. Dang right, dang right. Yeah, that's. Oh, here's uh, Bonnie. I got a picture of Bonnie. Ah, excellent. Bonnie, she who gave us uh, birth. She to who it gave all. us everything. Right there, right in the center. There's Bonnie, right there. Yeah. What is? <clears throat> what is she thinking about all? all about all this? Because this is nothing like. This is nothing like anything that she tried. In fact, I went to I went to this panel. <laughs> Where she explained about how she came up with My Pretty Pony, which is what it was in the first place. But it actually didn't actually happen until she had left to go to Parker Brothers. Um, so she was actually doing board games at Parker Brothers when My Little Pony hit. So she wanted real horses with real colors, with real manes, that kind of thing. And somebody at Hasbro came up came up to her and said, how about making them pink? Because girls love pink. And she said, well, horses aren't pink. And by the end of it, you had all these colors of horses. And in fact, the first ones didn't even have cutie marks. That came later. Um, and then she, she came up with the cutie mark thing. Um, before, all they had were Appaloosa's spots. They had spots on their rumps, and that was it. They were actually hand-painted spots. Um, I actually asked her a question, because I did project management... Uh, for Harley Davidson parts, mm. and she basically said that she was more of an industrial designer yeah. than she was anything else. I thought that's kind of interesting, so I asked the question: Did tooling cost for the mold to make the individual toy um, a factor in why it only had one pose? You know, they only had one pose. Yeah. If they'd had more tooling money, they could have had two poses or three poses. Yeah, that's something a lot of people don't realize is that uh, injection molded stuff. It's very, very cheap to make, uh, yes. uh, say, to make a gazillion of them. Like, incredibly cheap. That's why McDonald's can give away these really awesome toys. Yes. But when you make the, the, the actual mold, you machine that out of, like, uh, out of steel and it has mm -hmm. to be perfectly smooth. You have to make a, a half a dozen tries to And it's magic. Out, right, to make sure that when you inject the hot plastic, it cools at the right speed and, and it, it doesn't, apart. doesn't have bubbles. Yeah, you know, and so it's this trial and error, and uh, it's just awful. You know? It can be so. How much stupid. to make one? Fifty thousand bucks. You know, from that point forward, five cents each. You yeah. Know? <clears throat> so that's like when we made gas tanks 
at Custom Chrome, it would cost two hundred and fifty thousand dollars just for the two, the machine to make the halves that you had to weld, then weld together and put in the rest yeah. of the parts. So it, yeah, it, it's incredibly expensive to make injection molded tooling. And, it, and on top of that, it's not even that much of a science; it's more of an art. Because I, I went I went to South Korea and saw these big machines, and these guys are in there with a grinder. Yeah. Grinding on two hundred fifty thousand dollars tooling with this big hand grinder, going, yeah, take a little metal out of there, it'll be fine. <gasps> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Marby says it was. If only it was still called My Pretty Pony, then we could freely make them as big as we want. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Flair Cobra also wants to know what's the, what was the oddest, the strangest moment of the convention? Actually, uh, just the where where was the Twilight Zone located, uh, uh, as it were. Hmm. Where there are pretty little purple horses. This is the Twilight Zone. Rod yeah. Steiger did that with his jaw wired shut. He had just had his jaw broken. That's why he said Twilight Zone like this. Hmm. He had no choice. Yeah, no choice. The um, <clears throat> you know what? I didn't. I there wasn't really anything all that weird. You know, there really wasn't. Yeah. Um, there wasn't anybody being too, you know, in over. Board. There was everybody was seemed to be really having a good time. I sat down with you know some autograph cards and some buttons. I was giving stuff out that people come up and get their autograph and say hey and all kinds of stuff. There wasn't anything that was really mm -hmm. too overboard or sort of weird. I mean, John Delancey walking through, yeah. people would say hey and all that kind of stuff. But even then, he wasn't accosted by people. It was they were everybody was fairly respectful. Yeah. So I I don't think there was anything that was too Twilight Zoney out there. Yeah, well, that's actually something. Uh, I don't know how many of you um, uh, ever saw the series Babylon Five. Um, <clears throat> really, really good science fiction series, and uh, back in the uh, back in the nineties, and uh, one of the <clears throat> one of the things that they did that was uh, very different from anything else is they went full serial. Each show followed the next, <clears throat> and there was an actress in it, uh, Claudia Christian. She played Susan. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Susan Ivanova, you know, she was a very uh, taciturn, you know, very Russian, very Russian. Um, station uh, uh, executive officer, you know, second in command, and a very, very popular, great character. I, you know, I, I would love to see Claudia Christian do it as they do a guest voice. She would be awesome. Um, she goes to conventions and uh, completely refuses to have escorts or uh, say or handlers. Or anybody between her and the fans, because her premise is that science fiction fans don't don't know about you guys. Science fiction fans says, are the most respectful, easy to get along with people in the world, you know. And uh, that's a standard that we that we can live up to if we want. Yep. You know, and uh, you know, so uh, she is not uh, at all you know concerned about you know creepy stalkers, you know, and uh, yeah, which is which is actually kind of funny and, and odd. Because one of the things that she did a few years later, there's a certain magazine with rabbit ears on the girls, you know, that she did some photography for because you read it for the articles. Yes. And nobody creeped on her afterwards. You know, it's like, how, how does this happen? So, yeah, you know, that's a standard that we get to live up to, you know. Um, that's actually something else special about, uh, a little bit special about Everfree Northwest. It's, it's odd. It's about the facility itself. Mm -hmm. A couple of things about it, if, you have, if you've never been. First of all, the convention facilities are on top of the okay. parking garage yep. structure, so they're way up in there. It can be as loud as you want at three in the morning; nobody cares. Yeah, you know, so that that's that's really nice. It lets you have you know twenty four hour uh, you know uh, events, and uh, you're not going to bother the people that are trying to sleep. It's kind of a big thing. Um, the, the other thing is that the hotel bar, and you know they have a swank restaurant, you know Spencer's and all that. Very open, very accessible. You know, you can always see people there, and it's not like some of the other hotel bars that we've yeah. been at, where it's this, this standoffish feeling. You know, yeah. where you know the bartender's like, "Oh, I hope these weirdos don't come in here and no. you know, harsh my vibe." No, they loved it. What was really great is they yeah. had this new bartender. I yeah. can't remember her name, but she was <clears throat> all into it. She was into it, like talking to everybody about ponies, all kinds of stuff. She had her and M. A. Larson were like. Uh -oh. White on rice. Yeah. So right. yeah, it's it's uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah. And of course, they always made new drinks every year. They had two. They had a Twilight Sparkle drink, which they advertised with a Philly Twilight Sparkle. It was like, 
Mm, Philly right. Twilight Sparkle wants you to drink. What? Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I'm, all, I'm all into yeah. that. So this is the, this picture I just put up is actually Tarby and Denotive. Uh, Denotive rocking it out uh, all Depeche Mode style uh, with Tarby. Um, so that was a that was a cool thing, and I was side stage for that. That was all. Oh, that was all kinds of cool. Yeah. Well, there's there's another one for you. Um, I don't know how many of you do things like uh, Renaissance fairs. Renaissance. We have one of the most awesome Renaissance fairs uh, awesome. in the area. It's again another you know great facility. It's you know it's got trees, so it's not baking a hot you know and. Um, you know, a couple of uh, Dusty's little you know, bumpers there, you know, the axe throwing and all that. Yep. You know, and uh, they have um, some drink places where they'll give you like a cherry cider with some, you know, chocolate stout on top or chocolate liqueur on top. And oh, it's so tasty. They have a drink called My Little Brony. And it's like this layered drink that's like basically yep. everything that everything that's got a saturated color, they'll pour it in there. And uh, it's it's one of the most popular drinks now. Yep. Yeah. And this is this is at a Ren Fair. You know, mm-hmm. who, who the heck's ever heard of My Little Pony? Well, I guess they have. So yep. nice stuff. I I have this video. I have to show you guys somewhere else of uh, Mike the microphone there. Oh my God! They uh, the bartenders there. They latched onto him, and you know they they made him this special friend. Special. Yeah. 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 Yep. So here's a picture of Lee Tokar and Pony Toast and myself, and that was. During the time we, we uh, sat in a bar for, geez, four hours, yeah. uh, having dinner and uh, getting some drinks. Uh, Lee is all into it and having a good time again, so <coughs> it's all fun. Um, that's the kind of weekend it was right there. I have Lee Tolker on my lap. Well, you know, there you go. Oh, that's special. Uh, special. Yeah, what you got there? I don't know. I'm looking. What else have I got that I haven't shown you guys yet? Uh, oh, that's a nice picture. Uh, this is... Me, Scurry, and the Bronyville guys on uh, Mike Chicks. Excellent. Panel. Right there where we did uh, Bronies and Broadcasting. Selfies. And selfies. And that was me and Screwball and uh, the Bronyville guys talking about how to broadcast. And Mike Check and Pony Toast were on the other side uh, talking all about it. It was a good panel. Uh, Mike Check's panel put together. He did a good job on it. And uh, very informative. Yeah. He did a good job on that one. Yeah, here you go. Hi, one trick. Yeah, so one ran- trick, yay! Yeah, yeah. so uh, as a random ninja has it right that uh, whiskey is preferable. Let me tell, you, uh, let me tell you a little secret. If you ever want to get on the good side of most voice actors, you get them. Yeah, so you get them a bottle of something special. Yeah. You know, um, so almost all of them. You know, they 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 like their uh, they like their tipples. Look it up, and uh, especially. One Stephen Andrews. You like to scotch? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I said, that man, he is... I thought I was a single malt scotch snob. And I am. Yeah. But he takes it to a whole nother order of magnitude. He's bought into a uh, into a distillery up in British Columbia that's making, you know, boutique, you know, uh, you know real short run, um, uh, say, scotches and things like that. Um, he is serious about it. I think if uh, if he wasn't making music, he'd be making booze. More than likely. Yeah, say Stephen Andrews. You know, because say, if if you ever you redesign his, uh, his say his Pony OC, put a bottle of whiskey on his on his backside, and you know you'll have it right. Pretty much. Now during during the auction, they gave me this, which was of course a mallet and a pedestal for towel 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 towel. And I asked them when we started, can I break this? And they were all like looking at each other like, I don't know who owns this. I said, does the convention own this? Can I break it? I guess. And it's like every time we, we got to a soul, I just whacked this thing as hard as I could. Just bang! <laughs> it would make Pony Toast jump. I was like, that's good. Bang! The, uh, so at the end, right, the end of the auction, we bring up the uh, Silver Slinger, right? Goes for $2,500. So that was a really rocket. And just before that, we got into those last three items, Nicole Oliver and Lee Tokar show up, and it's like, oh, this is going to be good because Nicole goes down on the floor, and she's like getting everybody excited about, you know, bidding. Oh, she'll work it. She's working it. And I gave Lee the mallet. I said, Lee, when I sell something, you whack that thing as hard as you can on that thing. Going to break it? Yes, you're going to break. We're going to break that thing. I want you to hit it. So sure enough, Silver Slinger goes for twenty five hundred dollars, and as we're going up in hundred dollar increments. Nicole Oliver is going from bitter to bitter, sitting on their lap and giving them a kiss on the cheek. 
<laughs> if you want Nicole Oliver to sit on your lap, give me another hundred dollars right now. And some everybody's Woo! checkbooks explode. Yeah, almost like boom. Yeah, che- checkbooks. So that sells. Lee hits the thing. It doesn't break. Everyone's like, oh. So we get to we get to the the quilt. Right, goes up to seven thousand dollars. Right, and Nicole is going back and forth. And when, and when the guy bids seven thousand dollars, Nicole sits on the ground and puts her arm up on his leg like this. <laughs> really working it. Really working it. And then that sells. I said, Lee, hit it. Bang. And it, he's like, ah. He's on his knees because it didn't break. Right. And we're going, well, that was the last item. But Ingrid Nilsson was there. And we had one of her signed posters. Like, let's do this. So we bid that up to like $300. And I said, Lee, sold. And he just, he just, not 360 degree windmill, falls on the thing, almost hits his head on the freaking table. And sure enough, that thing smashes. Bam! And the crowd goes nuts. Nuts! And I'm like, yes! And what do you do with the pieces? Of what do you do with the pieces? You, got... you sign them and you auction them. Yep. 500 bucks right there. Yeah. $500. Yeah, was it one right more there. cancer treatment for a kid? One more cancer treatment. 500 bucks. Perfect. Thank you, Steve Streza. And you're still an evil. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah. But I love you. 500 bucks for that. Out. That, yeah. was, that was probably the funnest auction I've done in a <laughs> long time. This guy, and this guy awesome. has been doing um, you know, yes. charity auctions at, fa- at uh, Fanish conventions for, what, 15 years now? Off and on. Yeah, he's, but, he's, he's a pro. Yeah, so he'll work it. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, Flair Cobra wants to know, how come we uh, came to consider Applejack and Dash as two of your favorite ponies? Well, you can handle the Dash part. Yeah. Yeah. Dash. So why Dash? Why that? Yeah, what... Yeah, what's your dash problem anyway? What is, what's my what's my what's dash? your OCD with that? What's my OCD <clears throat> with dash? Well, because she's awesome. She's twenty percent cooler than you. That's not setting so the bar awesome. very high. So awesome. I'd say forty percent at least. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> now, for me, Applejack. Uh, I grew up in the uh, uh, say up in the uh, um, Sierra Nevada foothills. I actually grew up on a uh, so on a ranch with yes ponies, Welsh ponies. We had four, and. Um, Yes, I have something of a you know well, sort of a rural background and a rural um, you know set of sensibilities. You know, y'all do what you say, y'all keep your nose out of your neighbor's business. We all get along just fine, and uh, just uh, you know, she uh, she was look at the character that I most identified with. That and I am stubborn as hell, so as anybody could say, so uh, can identify there. Yeah. So yeah, pretty well, much. Just yep. In fact. This one is his I brought back from Yay! Cutie Corral. So Cutie Corral gave me a really good deal on Applejack, and she came home for just live with Lance. Yes. The, uh, but other than that, everything else is going good. This was a piece, uh, this was a huge piece that uh, Paper Phonies did specifically for this auction, uh, which was signed by Nicole Oliver, by, uh, who did Tree Hugger, of course, and John Delancey, who did Discord. So this is Tree Hugger, Discord, and, of course, Fluttershy um, all together. So uh, that was a beautiful piece of work. Wow. And they were building that uh, Thursday evening, I think, before they set up. So they were still putting <clears> that thing together Yeah. Um, right there at the, at the convention. Um, beautiful piece. Uh. Yeah, so, uh, like I say, yeah, everybody here is talking about moonshine on... Uh, moonshine! On yeah, I gotta love it. Yeah. yeah. So, here's a little story for you. <clears throat> true, totally true story, you know. My grandmother, uh, on my mother's side, back in, uh, as a back during Prohibition, she was like 17, 18 at the time, and uh, they lived in North Dakota, and she would uh, take the truck, you know, in the 1920s truck, drive north of the border, buy Canadian whiskey, head back south, and uh, the, uh, you know, the customs guys at the border you know, that were charged with, you know, you know, don't let anybody bring whiskey back because it's prohibited, they wouldn't bother her because you didn't bother the women. If you did, you'd end up face down in a ditch, you know, badge or no, you'd end up face down in a ditch. So my, my grandmother, the rum runner, but the family grew corn. They had about 600 acre, you know, uh, farm, you know, all corn. And uh, they realized that they had a bunch of corn stalk. And if you've never had corn stalk, uh, I mean, you chew on it, it's really, really sweet. It's what they get, you know, the high fructose corn crap from. So they said, you know, 
why should we be buying whiskey when we can make, make it whiskey. from the corn stalks? And it turned out my grandmother had a talent for operating the still without having it blow up. You know, the stuff that she made wouldn't even kill you, you know, because it's possible to screw up very easily and you know, get uh, methanol. It's all about getting the right temperature. And so my grandmother was the rum runner and the moonshiner. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's in the blood. Yep. You know, so it's 0 0.8 BAC. There you go. See, I had kind of the same thing in my family because my grandfather ran <coughs> cars across the St. Clair River when it was frozen over to Ontario. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they would run them back across the St. Clair River when it was frozen over with whiskey. There you go. That's what we have in common. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you, live on, so you live on the border with another country. There's always something that's cheaper there or available there that is expensive here or banned yep. here. Then you've got yourself an economy going. Yes, you do. Yeah, exactly. The, they say the free market will prevail, you know, hallelujah, and pass the, uh, how do I say, they pass the border. Pass cards. the corn squeezins. Absolutely. So this is, the, this is how the scatter print shirt looks live on body. So... If you want to check that out, uh, I got a couple more shirts in the pipeline. Uh, Lisa did a wonderful job on this shirt. We're probably going to up it about 10% because it's a little tight, but uh, they always do that with prototypes. Uh, but this is a wonderful shirt that's really cool. Um, I just got a message from Emmy Larson. He can't come on because he's got kid duty right now, but dang it. Yep. Oh, well. We'll get him again sometime. No worries. No worries. No worries. Yeah, so uh, let's see. Um yeah, a Celestia fan wants to know, where the heck can you get that fabric? Actually, that fabric was at um, Joanne Fabrics. Yeah. Um, it was earlier this year. Um, I've had a little trouble finding it here in the Bay Area, but I've heard that other people around the country have been finding it at their Joanne Fabrics because, of course, tastes change in different areas. Um, comic prints are pretty good, big out here. Might not be so big in the Midwest. Um, I'm actually looking for three to four more yards of it uh, so I can make another one. Um, so if anybody's found that in, uh, anywhere, uh, let me know, and I'll send you some cash doodles for four yards of that fabric. Um, so yeah, join Fabrics. In fact, they've had four, five, six different prints. They've made fleeces that you can make blankets out of. Um, they've made a really cool fleece with little sleepy ponies on it with sleeping masks on all of them that you can make like sleeping pants out of or a sleep shirt out of. Um, those are really cool. Um, so lots of, if you go to Joanne Fabrics, they got all these different prints that you can check out. Um, they've actually got a uh, little girl dress print stuff. So basically it's got the ruffle already in the print. So all you have to do is like make a tube dress out of it. It's, it's uh, brilliant. And they got four or five different prints of that. Um, so all, the only thing holding you back is your imagination. Yeah, Lots exactly. of stuff out there. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, so how many different patterns have you seen? I've seen yeah, at uh, least seven or eight. Yeah, there's yeah, there's the ones at Joanne's. I, know, yeah. I saw there's there there are companies that uh, say that have actually bought some licenses for mm -hmm. uh, making My Little Pony fabric, and they just print it off by the yard. Yep. So yeah, so to take a look on uh, Google. Just Google My Little Pony sewing fabrics or something like that. And it should yeah. pull up at least two mm -hmm. or three websites that sell the stuff. Etsy, it's the answer. It's always yeah. the answer. Well, Etsy, get, the people use the stuff to make the stuff to sell on Etsy. So go back another person, and you'll probably find it somewhere in uh, a fabric uh, sale website. So, um, good stuff. All righty. Let's see. Anything else I got in pictures? Let's yeah. See. Well, while you're going through there, yeah, go ahead. I just want to uh, want to say uh, flog the uh, uh, say the uh, charity again a little bit. Yes. Again, we were continuing last week's uh, is it last week's charity, uh, Second Harvest Food Bank. Um, Second Harvest is one of the very best run uh, charities in the entire country. There's a website called CharityNavigator.org. You should go there whenever you see a charity and look them up and see how good a job they do of actually spending the money you send them. Absolutely. And uh, they have this little chart, you know, it's like you know, how transparent they are, how financially effective they are. Second Harvest is watch. Way to the top. Yeah, like it's one of the top ten in the entire nation, and um, <clears throat> we're we're here in Silicon Valley, and the uh, and uh, people say, oh yeah, it's really really rich. You know, everybody makes so much money. No, most of the people here in Silicon Valley do what people everywhere do. They're car mechanics. You know, they're you know checkout cashiers at uh, at Safeway. You know, they're uh, say they're dental assistants. You mm -hmm. know, they're professional dog groomers. Um, 
and uh, so, and they're not making tons and tons of money, but the cost the cost of their rent is freakishly high. Ten percent of everybody in Silicon Valley is on food aid of one sort or another, and uh, Second Harvest Food Bank um, fills the gap, uh, and uh, say and uh, through the end, actually end of today, uh, they have somebody matching two for one or to one for one. Excuse me, every dollar, you know that that comes into uh, say Second Harvest. So. Double your money, double your fun. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm doing my own matching on that too. So by the time you're done, one of your dollars turns into two bucks forty cents, and that'll feed. That's five meals because these guys are so efficient in, uh, you know, say, in how they do food distribution and uh, say, in the deals that they make with uh, wholesale food providers, etc. They are the best. Yep. So, go to the charity, you know, for last week. Click on the link, you know. And as yep. always, this guy has this pile of. stuff. Stuff. We're not going to go through it all again, or uh, go through it all again. It's just this mountain of stuff. Some of it's fr is from Japan, and it's stuff, and it's got ponies on it, and it's stuff, and it can all be yours if for uh, five dollars you get into the drawing, and your name comes out of there, and off it goes. That's how we do it. So go to yeah. manlyesbrony.com, click on the big box link, and give at least five bucks. You'll be in for the drawing of this stuff next show next Monday. You got it. All right. You got it. So, and speaking of food, this was this morning's breakfast with me, Margin Lion, Buttons, and of course, Screwball, where we all went to Denny's for breakfast before we all went our separate That's the ways. only thing Denny's is good for is breakfast. It's breakfast. I mean, yeah. they're really good for breakfast, but not much else. Yeah. Well, same thing with same thing McDonald's. I am completely addicted to McDonald's, you know, um, uh, sausage muffin with egg. Oh my God, those are like, that's like sodium crack. Yeah. Um, he has two. So, Usually. Yeah, it, well, I'm trying to cut down because I have so many of the muffins with me. So, uh, yes. so yeah, that's that. Once in a while, I need to get him doing yoga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. No, I do uh, doing yogurt. Yoga, yogurt. No, yoga. I like, I like yoga. yoga. No, yogurt's good. No, yoga. Yeah, yeah. I don't pronounce right. Yogurt. No, yoga. Yeah, yoga. Chowda. 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 Yes, yoga. So, okay. anything else you guys want to know? Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, let's feed us, feed us feed questions. Us. Yeah, we want the questions. Yes, I got this. I got this beautiful picture of Blue yeah. that we were partying on Sunday night, and she was like, "Eh," <laughs> because everybody was saying, "Wow, you look like Elsa <laughs> <laughs> from Frozen." It's like, yeah, your hair does look like. <laughs> She's like, get over don't it. Tell me. Yeah. Don't call me. If you don't call me. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, Blue. Love you, Blue. How you doing? Yeah. There we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, and Hulicious wants to cosplay as Dusty, but it makes him look like Heisenberg. Heisenberg? From Breaking Bad. What? From Breaking Bad. Uh, yeah, I know. He's a Bali boy. He got the stash. And yes. Did you know that John Delancey was in Breaking Bad? He was. He was. In, yeah, he was the air traffic controller. Yep. You know? So, hey, funny how it keeps circling yes. back around. Circling got back around. Heisenberg Berg. connected to My Little yes. Pony through Delancey. And of course. It's canon. Of course, we were partying. Do you? Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Anesthetic. <laughs> yes. Mm. <clears throat> Yes. We were partying hard. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Ah, Mini Applejack has it right. Just go to you go to Denny's and you get the free birthday breakfast. Yep, pretty much. That, 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 that's your tradition right there. Yep. Any, oh. Any good suggestions for serving ciders with barbecue? Ooh. Well, <clears throat> Ciders are usually sweet, so uh, you would want to to do the a uh, sauce style, you know, a Kansas City style or St. Louis style barbecue rather than dry rub. Right. Uh, or if you do dry rub, <clears throat> make sure it's got something with a lot of brown sugar in it, because that that'll tie it all together. Brown sugar goes mm -hmm. with the say with your ribs. Brown sugar goes with your cider. Uh, make sure you've got a uh, say, a, a, say a good salad, uh, something that was say that also can have a sweet. Uh, Dressing, you know, like say a spinach salad mm -hmm. with uh, big old handfuls of blackberries and raspberries, raspberries and grumbly cheese. Well, it's again, make sure it's like fresh mozzarella. Fresh mozzarella. Yeah, say nothing too, say nothing too stinky. No stinky, stinky cheese. No stinky cheese. No stinky cheese. No stinky cheese. No stinky cheese. And um, 
let's say, and again, maybe like a, a blush wine vinaigrette or a, a sort of balsamic. Yeah, so the uh, the cider will tie it all together, give it that sweet note. Mm-hmm. So yeah, again, your sweet barbecue sauces, your brown sugar based dry rubs, you are in business. Mm. Yes, absolutely. And of course, I get I get my phone this morning and I open it up, and this is in my phone, which is done by the wonderful Kugari, <laughs> who did a lot of our button work earlier in our first T-shirt, and I guess she saw me wandering around in Easy Glider during the weekend on the, on the live stream, and she said, Oops, my pen tablet s- slipped, and this came out. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Kugari. I love it. Oh, my God. It's so cool. New button coming, people. This will be the new button yeah, for, just, for BronyCon right there. That, that is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Thank you yeah. very much. I love you. Yeah. Yeah, oh, somebody brought up the topic of Texas barbecue. Texas. Let me tell you about Texas barbecue. Just outside of Austin, which most people in Texas would tell you is not, not Texas. Not, not, not Texas. No, that's California. California. About, about 40 miles outside of Austin, uh, out in the hill country, go up and down, past all these, you know, 500-acre hobby ranches. Mm-hmm. You know, all of a sudden you come upon this little uh, liquor store in the middle of nowhere, and it says, last beer before Salt Lake. Salt Lake is a world famous barbecue joint. It's way out. It is literally, literally in the middle of nowhere, um, and the food is really, really good. It's a, one of the best barbecue joints all around. They have this huge uh, smoking pit that they just keep going constantly, and uh, for about twenty bucks, the deal is all you can eat. That's right, all you can eat barbecue. Holy pig! Let me tell you. Uh, but Texas is kind of weird about its alcohol laws, uh, so they they you, they can't sell you any alcohol. That's why that liquor store is you know last year for. But they'll give you a bucket full of ice. You know, you, and if you bring your own beer in, you know, they just put it in there. There you go. That's totally okay. It's just you can't sell it. So you have uh, so you've got this really nice place that's on like this ranch. You know, it's good size. You know, it seats you know three hundred, four hundred people on any given night. All you can eat barbecue. That it's good, and uh, again, they have live music. You know, it's mm-hmm. not too far from Austin. Best place in the world for live music, I swear. And uh, you know, if you're ever there, you gotta go. You have to go to the Salt Lake. You know, oh. if you're vegetarian, you won't be so happy. Nah. But uh, say, but if you're a carnivore that is uh, say that has burgered your way to the top of the food chain, you know, yep, good go. stuff. You go. Oh my God. You go now. You go now. <coughs> Anything else going on here? Bajati. Yeah. I should be home by 8 if all goes well. Well, Bajati's not going to be with us. I try to get Bajati too. I've been calling a bunch of people yeah. trying to get him to come on and give us a talk. But uh, not uh, nobody's actually available because a lot of people are just getting home. Or like Bajati says, he's still running around doing post-con stuff, being the, uh, the con chair. So, uh, nah, I don't think... Uh, oh, Kugari's in the chats! Hi! You, I See this? See? 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 This thing is awesome. Yeah. That God. is. Yep. She's in my chats watching me. It's awesome. Yeah, so uh, we actually have a question for you from uh, Ricardo. Ricardo. Uh, here, I heard you got a red card from kicking mic I, check. I, yeah. Okay, t- I haven't heard about this. You bet. You give. Well, give. you know, it was, it was an accident. It uh, was. Oh, they I, always was say I was that. walking along. I was walking <clears throat> along the hallway, minding my own business. There, there's your first clue. Minding my own business, and my, and Mike Check just fell into my legs. Oops! And fell down. And what does Red Card do? He comes over and doesn't even go yellow card. He gives me a red card straight up. You should have given him 150 million dollars right then. That's and true. There. Then you can have anything you I want. Have anything I want. I understand that's a tradition. It's a tradition in, in the FIFA. Yeah. Yeah. Tradition. So. See, it was all Mike Check's fault. So he's just rolling on the ground going, oh. Yes, he was rolling on the ground. He fell into my legs. You know, my leg being up to the left just meant I was trying to back up from Mike Check because he fell into me. Yeah, if the foot happened to be at face level yes. and you happened to get, you know, this is yeah. Reebok, you know. Yeah. yeah. What me? I'd say, you know, sorry, soccer is not a manly sport. <laughs> Except for Zidane, who, uh, yeah. say, who, you know, headbutts anyone he doesn't like. That's manly. That's manly. Stupid, Stupid, but manly. But manly. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. What do we got here? 
Uh, yeah, oh, random ninja. Shinerbach. That, Shine. Oh, that, is, that, that is the official beer of Texas. Yes. It's not bad. Not bad. It's not bad. But yes, uh, it is a uh, it is a uh, somewhat sweet beer, and mm-hmm. uh, it goes wonderful with the barbecue. Good rule of thumb, uh, if you want to know what wine goes with the food or what beer goes with the food, get, get something that's actually made in the locale, you know? Yeah. So if you're having French food, have a French wine. If you're having Italian food, have an Italian wine. If you're having, you know, Australian food, have an Australian wine. Yep. You know, if you're having something that's 100% artificial, have a California wine. Yep. You know, so, uh, so yeah, good rule of thumb. I can't have wine. Yeah, well. We all know that. Makes them headachy. Yeah, Tan- uh, tannins. Yeah. Not it's, good for it's the sulfites, too. Sulfites and tannins yeah. and things. Yeah. So, we'll have to find you a sulfite for white wine. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. oh, hey, Minneapolis Jack has been to, uh, to Salt Lake. For oh, nice. Yeah. Da, 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 Let's da, see what we got here. Do, do, do. Anybody else? Talk to me. Yeah. I'm lonely. Yeah, that's uh, it's a commenting about some of the oddness of uh, of Texas and places like that. When we went to Nightmare Nights uh, in Dallas, which was awesome, it was great fun. It was, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I didn't go in there with any, with any expectations, but it still was a lot more fun. Than I thought it would be just because it was so friendly. Um, you know, it's a it's a good, good, good little con. You know, um, so I said. Let's have a room party. Where's the nearest liquor store? Four miles away. Turns out in Dallas, there's these little tiny, tiny areas, like two blocks. Yep. And there's packed solid with liquor stores. And there's liquor stores nowhere else because those are the only places where they're allowed to have you know, on-sale beer. I just, I, I don't understand that. But, uh, so, but yeah, we uh, we went and you know got our, uh, as they got our you know stock for the, uh, say for a room party and. Uh, you know, went to the hotel and said, you know, okay, you know, here's some more money, give us a suite. And uh, so they had a, a nice little room party there. But, uh, again, just the whole idea of that and state-owned liquor stores. Yeah. The state said, you should not drink, but if you do, buy it from us. You know, Pennsylvania, places like that. Pennsylvania so, does it. Ontario does it. In fact, all of Canada does it. The yeah. beer store. You have to go to the beer very, store to get your alcohol. schizophrenic. The same, the, same, say, the same government that is trying to take away your booze is trying to sell you booze. Yes. Go fig. That's like right across the border in Port Huron, Michigan. You can beep a horn. They'll roll up the door and you drive your truck in and they'll give you an eight pack of beer and then you drive out the other end. This is true. The drive through liquor store. Right across the border. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Now this, this is a beautiful shot of this morning out of my hotel window because our buddy Guns, Nathan, who lives with us, Rode his motorcycle, which is the one in this shot, the orange one. Um, gorgeous bike, by gorgeous the way. Gorgeous bike, by the way. We're, we've been putting a little bit of work into it and uh, starting to run really well. And he said, I'm going to ride my bike up. So he did. And it rained on him <laughs> this morning. Perfect. Beautiful and hard. He was going to go visit his cousin. Yeah, he go visit his cousin, his cousin today. And he was on the ferry to go visit his cousin when I got on the plane to come home. But that's it, it was beautifully gorgeous until this morning. And here it is. Seattle in all its glory. Rain. I didn't get to go into Seattle, which I was, I was, I always like to go into Seattle when I go up there, but I, I'm going to have to make a second trip this year because I love going into Seattle. Um, didn't get to go this time. Yeah. <clears throat> they need to send some of that rain down to South. Yes, we need some. Well, California has exactly two types of weather, drought and mudslide. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it, it's, a, it's never just nice. Nice. It, it no, could be nice. No. Now we go way up here, way up here. The average yep. is great. It's never the average. That's nope. cool. Never the average. I think I'm out of pictures. You are just about out of pictures. I'm, out of, I'm just about out of pictures, guys. Yeah, well, so. I say, I'm, I'm looking at the time here, and we're just about out of show. So are we? Let's, yeah. yeah, we got about 10 more minutes. So. Okay, we got about 10 more minutes. We're going to go, because uh, it's a short show today. Uh, we're going about 10 more minutes, and then uh, we're going to go. So if anybody has any questions about anything whatsoever. What's your favorite kind you, of sushi? Says, wait for him. What's my favorite kind of sushi? Um, I actually like... Um, Rolls that have a lot of taste to them. I like uh, some with some bite. There's one at our favorite place, the Dragon Roll. Yeah, um, uh, Sushi Mania place. Sushi yeah. Mania, which is yeah. the Dragon Roll. They also have a Rainbow Roll, which has like six different types of fish in it, mm-hmm. um, which was really good. Um, I prefer rolls, whereas this one prefers um, salmon roll. Um, yeah, and or, a or Tobiko. Other, I got, I have, to, I have to have my Tobiko. Yep. 
Um, so I'm more. I love uh, unagi maki. Yep. You yeah. know, and and like, I, I like fresh, uh, fresh, fresh steamed, fresh steamed edamame. My, my, love it stuff. My sushi is full of eels. Yes. My tuhi is full of eels. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Voodoo donuts. Uh, so Angel Bunny mentions voodoo donuts. We have this place down here called Psycho Donuts. So Psycho Donuts. Oh yeah, Psycho is, Donuts says like you can get bacon on your donuts. Yeah. You can get jalapeno on your donuts. Yeah. No, it's just weird. Weird stuff. Mostly good, but yeah. Here. Yeah, it's right down in the middle of the university district. Yeah, it's mm. crazy. Uh, what? Uh-oh. Joe? Joe? Static on the screen. Static on the... Uh-oh. Joe? Yep. Okay. You, oh, okay, turn up the transmitter some more. But, yeah, about 10 more percent. More power, Captain. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, I, I, not so loud! So loud. Oh, God, Joe. I'm going to have to teach him this, this stuff. Okay, so we got Joe Stevens. So EQI is now, and we'll be back in about two. Okay, S news straight from Ponyville. Coming up right now. Thank you, Dusty Cats. This just in. Apple Bloom has added blank flanks to the list of nationally recognized disabilities. In addition to paralysis, loss of limb, and pretty much anything Derpy Hooves has, Princess Celestia has modified the Equestrian Disabilities Act to include not having your cutie mark as a disability. This has come after tremendous amounts of lobbying on the part of Apple Bloom, the Cutie Mark Crusaders, and the We Support Everything Foundation. Those suffering from the lack of a cutie mark applaud this decision and claim it's a step in the right direction to recognizing a real condition. Those with real conditions think Apple Bloom is just trying to get a check from the government, so she doesn't have to work on actually getting her cutie mark. Ponies in wheelchairs, pegasi with broken wings, burning ducks, these are creatures with real problems. And by recognizing frivolous claims, it's actually diverting resources from those ponies who actually need care and not a swift kick in the face from their older sister. Ponies will not have to make special accommodations for those without cutie marks. They will be allowed to take their pet monkeys on planes. Classes will have to be taught in a way that ponies without cutie marks related to science won't have to take chemistry lest they find learning the structure of atoms offensive. And using words such as blank flank or child still learning who they are will be considered hate crimes. On the plus side, Diamond Tiara has been arrested without bail. Apple Bloom was unavailable to comment on this story. It turns out, getting a law such as this passed required so much effort, it was possible Apple Bloom would have gotten a cutie mark in lobbying. She lied, manipulated, and cheated, so she would have made a great politician. But when EQI reporters went to interview her, we found Apple Bloom floating in a stasis chamber. She doesn't move, doesn't speak, doesn't contribute in any way to her own growth, but at least she still collects government benefits. I'm Joe Stevens, and this has been a news brief from the Equestrian Inquirer. Back to you, Dusty Cat. And that's, again, Joe Stevens straight from the desk in Ponyville. Can you believe that? The bureaucracy grows. Grows and grows and grows. Apple Bloom, I didn't think I'd get that out of Apple Bloom. That she would be basically pounding the steps of the Capitol to try and get money out of Celestia. Yes, I, 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 wonder, I wonder about equestrian lobbyists. Of course, I'm also starting to wonder, may, is it, maybe this is something that's a counterpoint to the, that Joe's being paid himself? <gasps> Is the media in, in the, the pocket, pocket of the royalty? royalty? Oh! oh. Mm. Mm. We're going to have to investigate Joe ourselves. Just maybe. Stay tuned. Just maybe stay tuned. Stay Expose tuned. of Expose. Joe Stevens. Who knows? With that, we got, geez, six minutes left. Anybody got any more questions? Anybody? Plank. Yes. Plank is always making something. Message from Pixel. Doo -doo -doo. Uh oh. Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. Let's see. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Hmm. You know, this is... I'm working. He's, he's, yeah, this, this, this for him is a job. I'm working. I'm working. Flying thumbs. The flying thumbs. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do. There you go. That's Nintendo. There you go. I can't. I, I even even know how I remembered that. I haven't played that game in like twenty years. You've been hanging around Mike the microphone too ah, much. Just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, there you go. Just a little bit. 
Oh, uh, while, so while uh, what we see if she's gonna, yeah, pop uh, on. Just wanted to uh, to give a, a shout out and uh, call you guys' attention to uh, Baron Engels. Uh, uh, got a uh, was a good friend of the show. Yep. Uh, he's got a Patreon up and going. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has quit his day job. He is going to try and make it as a full time artist. He's been doing these absolutely wonderful, intense, really really intense dreamscapes uh, of uh, David Crusher. So if you're into gothic horror, you know, and things like that. He, you know, he does it, and he does it with class. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, he also does some of the cutest characters. Oh, my God, it's great. So he's, uh, so he has his own live streams that he does uh, every couple of weeks, you know, brought to you, you know, from your local uh, Manly Studios. And uh, check it out. Check it out. We'll, we'll put up a, a link in the... Uh, yep, absolutely. Put up a link in the uh, you stream, the live, you stream, the live stream, live stream, YouTube. Upload. There I, you go. I just got off a plane. I'm sorry. Yeah, the uh, saying, boy, your brain's tired. My brain is tired. Boy, are my species indenominally wings tired. God. Yeah, so it is time for... Time for... The final questions. Uh-oh. The Uh-oh. final Uh-oh. questions. So you get... Uh, so now, Dusty, your what? final question. You get to ask me a question. Oh, I get to ask you a question? Then I get to ask you one. I get to ask you a question. What the hell did you do over the weekend while I was gone? Uh, well, I did. So I did the assisting uh, with uh, Baron Engel show, and I wrote uh, pony games. <gasps> I'm doing a uh, role playing game um, called the Isotopes of Harmony. It is a Fall of Equestria style game, though it is actually closer to Mad Max and Thunderdome, <gasps> Road Warrior in, in character. Less radiation, more more crazy guys. Lordy Mungus, just walk away. I'm so excited for that because yeah. I'm a playtester. Yeah, he's playing a nerd. I'm playing a nerd. He's playing a nerd. Yep. So there's my question for you. Tell me about your nerd pony, you geek. My nerd pony. My nerd pony actually grew up in in the vault, and he learned he's how. He's a to, cellar dweller. He's a cellar dweller, and he learned how to work on all of the ancient technology. So he actually he can work on the computers, and he knows ancient technology. But so, but he's not a big guy. He's like a little willy, little willowy guy. Sort of like uh, featherweight. So he's got a pit buck, and he goes out, and he's going to be part of the four-man team, and he's going to be able to do all of that stuff, like fixing the old tech and things like that. So it's sort of a stretch for me, that's for sure, because all the games we've ever played, AD&D, all these other ones, I was always the tank. Yeah, oh yeah. It's always a, the tank. In the other pony game that yep. we play in, which is uh, done by another friend of ours, uh, Dave Bryant, yep. um, which we all take turns, you know, being the pony master. Yes. Yeah, pony master. Oh, um, yeah. So he plays. He plays Tongs, who is a uh, blacksmith. Thinks he's a wonderful artist. Makes horrible, oh, horrible the, the, public art. The, the, those rusty abstract art, you know, chunks of iron that are twenty feet high that you see in the city park. You got no idea what the heck that is. Yeah, that's what I do. His fault. Yep. Yeah, and uh, say, and uh, the, he he does that, and he kicks down doors. Yes. Mostly kicks down doors. But the be- the best piece of horrible public art I ever made. Was a statue of Princess Celestia. Oh yes. Which actually followed the sun on its pedestal, but not only that, it had jeweled eyes. Oh which, yes. Which had ref, which refracted, refracted mm-hmm. inside the body and actually came out the sun cutie marks, and it always Celestia actually had it point directly at Luna's window anytime during the day. It, it, tra- would, it, tra- it would track the sun, the sun light pipes and then, it down, you know, because- and go straight into Luna's room. Yeah, I mean, say because I say because Celestia thought that it might be a good idea to shed some light where the sun don't no shine. shine. And that was, that. hey, it was funny at the time. Yeah, I did the optics. He did. You know, my, say my yes. my pony at the time there was Astro Rose, and yep. her big thing was astronomy and optics. And yep. So yeah, it she do- was crazy. Yep. It doesn't look like uh, we're gonna get uh, Pixel Prism to join us tonight. They're a little bit burnt, so we're, we'll get them on uh, another show. Uh, yep. No problem with that. So we are just about yep. out of time. I think we got time for one more question, then we're going to get out of here. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Hulicious uh, so has you pretty much pegged. Powder Ganger. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, it is just about that time. It's just about that time. So thank you, everybody, for coming by and... Uh, putting up with all, all kinds of stuff that I've been doing um, and jabbering about and putting up my vacation pictures, if you want to call it. And thank you for putting up with a substitute screwball. Um, um, shoot, horse feathers. 
No, I'm gonna that, go. I'm gonna go look at my somber pictures. Not instead. horse feathers. It's it's pony feathers. No, it's cake. <laughs> we used to say something about cake, didn't we? Yeah. See, that's how d- delirious I am. I don't even remember his his cake. Well, he has to thing. tone himself down yes. so much so for much. the show. It's... Yeah, if you ever watched one of his live plays, he <clears throat> is a nasty, nasty. He's got a nasty mouth He's on him. He's a potty mouth. He's a potty mouth. I, I mean, just to listen to him, you're sure he'd be from Perth. Yep. If you ever been to Perth, Australia, every other word is... Yeah. yeah something yeah. like that. So with that, we're going to get her out of here and go have some dinner because it's about 7.30 time, our time and I'm getting hungry. So yeah. we're going to get out of here. Remember, we're going to go ahead and have a show next week and then we'll have a show the week after that. So we're going to go three weeks in a row. Uh, so we'll have a normal show next week and then we'll have the show right after the 100th anniversary show of MLP. Thank you very much for everybody for coming out. Thank you very much, my sponsor, Little's Toy Company. If you need a Funko, if you need any of this type of stuff, go to Little's Toy Company on the web and order it up uh, because they give us all this kind of great stuff to give to you guys on all of these charity, on all this charity work. And thank you, Everfree Northwest, Bajati, and and all you guys up there, everybody who worked on Everfree Northwest, who made it such a wonderful weekend, everybody down to the guy who just had to break all that stuff down and take it back to the stinking storage locker for next year. Everybody who was filling up the Penske truck when I left. All you guys. Thank you very much for making a wonderful show that up there that we get to come up to Seattle and, and have a great time uh, and all that stuff. So with that, we're out. All right? See ya. Dusty, click the outro. Okay. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.